Do whatever you want to. Can't hurt anything in here. <laughs> this was a hunting camp, so. <laughs> I love it. So, um, let's start with a little bit of, you know what the, um, you know what I'm doing, the publication that's going to profile each of the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that should be done probably by June or July. So you'll get a complimentary copy, obviously. But I've also just applied for a grant to the National Endowment for the Arts to do a Hall of Fame quilt exhibit. So that will be in conjunction with the 1986 induction ceremony. Mm -hmm. So if we get funded for that, think of a quilt that either you that you've made that either you have or some, someone you know has that you'd like to see exhibited. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. And good. part of that's going to be a small traveling exhibit when you photograph from the publication and just move it around to different sites. So, let's start with a little of your history. Um, did you, are you from here originally? Well, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not right here, I mean, but above Grainsville on the other mountain I lived there. And then uh, in my younger years, I lived in Port Jervis. Oh, you did? Yeah. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And what, what did your parents do? Well, my father, uh, see, I lost my mother when I was eight. Uh -huh. And I lived with friends down there. My father was in construction, and he worked on the railroad a while. And, of course, we were just left in Port Jervis until he remarried and came up here. Because uh -huh. he had known this girl in his younger uh -huh. years, and, and they got married. And, of course, that's how I came to be up here in the first place. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So. Um. So did, how did you learn to quilt? Did you learn to quilt back then? Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, I was about 15, I guess, and my stepmother always had a quilt. She always had a quilt on in the dining room. Yeah. And uh, it, you'd run in there, and I was the only one. We had uh, three girls home, and the rest of them hated it, and yeah. I loved it. So I used to go and quilt with her a little bit. Uh -huh. And uh, then, of course, for years I was away from it because I married and I was working and I had children. But then after I retired, I was postmaster in Neversink. Uh -huh. When I married my present husband, my first husband died. Uh -huh. But then when I moved up here, it's a, it's a funny story. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I came up and I swore when I came up here because I'd been involved in everything, raising two kids by myself. You're the in PTA, Scouts, uh, Home Bureau, everything under the sun you're doing, you know. Uh -huh. So when I came up here, I'm not going to do anything. That's, yeah. This is my retirement, and uh, of course, finally, I ju of course I went to church down here and they had a ladies' aid. And my husband said, finally said to me, well, those ladies keep asking me why you don't come down. Maybe you ought to. So I gave in and went. And uh -huh. I'd been in there for a year, and all of a sudden the thing began to fold because it was a group of very elderly ladies. Uh -huh. And I was the baby in the group. Uh -huh. And, uh, uh -huh. uh, of course, the, the president died, and they had nobody. Or was she retired, but she died shortly after that. And there was nobody to take her place, so the group was going to fold up. And they kept saying to me, you're the one that has to do it because there isn't anybody else. Well, I let it go for a little while. I, I wouldn't take it. I just absolutely refused. And I knew it was going to stop. Well, this is my dear girl. Eighteen years ago, I got to be president. Uh, uh. <laughs> From there on, nobody ever gave me in to be president. I mean, I have a lot of young people now, and it's the thrill of my life. Uh -huh. But uh, I fought it every foot of the way. I mean, I just did not want to have anything to do with this. I love to quilt, uh -huh. but I like to go down there and be free to just quilt, not to take. Well, then, of course, the, the um, uh, treasurer, she passed away. Uh -huh. So I am now, my dear, the president, uh -huh. the vice president, the treasurer, <laughs> the secretary. We have no other offices. So now it's just uh, my own group who comes, and I have Catholic, Protestant, Jewish, and I ha even have a Japanese girl. Wow. And then none, of the, none of them belong. There's just one girl who comes who belongs to my church up here. See, it used to be one of these structured groups where you had Bible study oh. and all this kind of thing that they have with ladies' aid. And when I took it over, that's the one thing. There was going to be no members, no such a thing as membership. Okay. Because they had a little group, they had a group here who could vote and another group who couldn't vote because they weren't members. I said, we do away with everything. I just come to here to quilt and have a good time if you want to settle for that. Uh -huh. so that and that's what we do. Uh -huh. And, of course, uh, this other lady you're going to see uh, today, Bertha Ackley, is the only one left of the original group. Oh, really? She's the only one that's left from when, we, when I went in. Uh -huh. All the rest have passed away, you know, because they were... And at that time, it was just... 
a group of very elderly ladies that scared the heck out of me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have to remember I'm on television. <laughs> You're recording. But anyway, uh, that that really did worry me, you know, because uh, uh, you first each you lose friends as you go along, you know, and it's sad. But now I have the most. I am so nobody in this world knows how proud I am of that group. Because it's a United Nations, and we all get along, and we have wonderful mm -hmm. meals, and we have what we see at noon. We bring a sandwich, uh -huh. and then the, whoever that isn't structured either. If you want to come and bring a dish of salad today, you bring it. If you want to bring dessert, it's not assigned to anybody. And then we have, and we always have wonderful lunches. Uh -huh. And of course, in the summertime, we're down here in the church hall across from the church. But in the winter, we have to go to people's homes. Uh -huh. And my daughter-in-law has a big house. That's not heated. No, 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 and you can't heat it because it just was a shed, you know, that they put siding on. It was too cold. Yeah. So this um, winter, my oh, husband. Excuse me. What do you want, dear? Yeah. Yeah. This is my husband. Thank you. And Chance and Tucker. And Bill Ross. She's the boss. As it should be. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, this winter, we couldn't go to my daughter-in-law's house, so we were up at Bill Coombs' mother's, yeah. Bill Coombs, and we pulled up in her house. Bill Coombs, you know, is, is in Albany. He's the one that you vote for. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, his mother is, is my right arm in our group. I love her, beyond Yeah. Anything. And uh, she's, uh, she said, well, what, since my daughter-in-law couldn't have she would take them until... Uh, the last part of February, and then they go away. Uh -huh. So that's where we're coping now. Uh -huh. But uh, it's one of the things that I fought so hard to keep from doing, and <laughs> and now so it's, it's been my 19 years, 18 years, 18, but 19 years. Yeah, in the group. Wow. I've been in there 19. Is there 19. a name for the group? We call, still call it the Claryville Ladies' Aid, oh, but okay. but it really isn't because the Ladies' Aid is supposed to have all of this other right. stuff, you know, right. and it. But we never changed the name. It would, we figured it would cause confusion. Uh -huh. And uh, our minister allowed it. I mean, he, uh, there's always a question about this kind of thing. You know, some people are very narrow-minded about religious organizations. And when we got our new minister, I was afraid that uh, maybe he wasn't going to approve of the way we do things. Uh -huh. But he's my biggest supporter. I mean, he's wonderful. I mean, he comes and has lunch for the ladies whenever he can and has a marvelous time. Uh -huh. But it's no longer the group. But see, in, in, in the beginning, it, as I say, it was just those elderly ladies who were so serious. Now it's a bunch that raises cane all the time. Yeah. It's a marvelous time. <laughs> yeah, even when I came from, from uh, my test the other day, I was so upset and nervous. And uh, my daughter-in-law said to me, uh, that was the day of our quilting. And I knew they were quilting up at Ethel. And uh, she said, Mother, we're going up there and be with the ladies and you'll feel better. And it was just like heaven therapy to go up there because they're so and, and it's family I mean like if I have a problem they're all concerned and, and they would give the day I had my operation for my breast uh, that was the day they were quilting and they called up there and asked to speak to a nurse to know how I was getting along and all and I mean oh, it, it's really uh -huh. it, 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 uh, to me it's one of the most remarkable groups that I know of yeah uh -huh. because very few uh, uh, groups where you put everybody in together like that, uh -huh. mesh. Yeah. Uh -huh. So wh I'm interested in this Japanese person. How did you get a Japanese woman? Well, they, she bought uh, the house above me, the second house above me. Uh -huh. And uh, I, she, she speaks so broken, it's very difficult to uh -huh. understand it. Uh -huh. But of course, uh, we're good neighbors. We have a wonderful little group here, too. I'm a very lucky lady. And we were friendly to everybody that comes in. And right away, we took her in our little neighborhood. Yeah. And so we kept asking her to go and quilt with us. Well, at first, she's beautiful seamstress. I mean, she's yeah. so beautiful. She didn't know anything quilt. She didn't know quilt from anything. But she made clothes, and she worked in the garment district in oh. the city. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, uh, but uh, finally, she, she kept saying, well, she couldn't talk with us, you know, because you have to be used to her to talk to her. And then we said, it makes no difference. Come along. 
So she came down, and after the first time, that's the most amazing thing. Uh, sometimes we have a little struggle getting people in there, but after one meeting, I mean, they're, they're so devoted that... And, and I have girls in that group who actually say, don't schedule anything for me on Tuesday because I'm going to quilting. Yeah. That's right. You, you hear it all the time. They won't make appointments. They won't have anything. That's the one day of the week that they stay. Uh -huh. And that's why they like to keep it going all winter. I have offered, and you know, different times to cancel it for the winter. And nobody wants to do that. They yeah. just want to go all winter. So how many members do you have? We don't have members. We have... Uh, oh, how many non-members? Yeah. <laughs> we have uh, just... Sometimes there's 12, sometimes there's 14, and some, you know, just whatever. In the summertime, we have a lot of people. That's another funny thing about it, because in the summertime, we have a lot of city people around. And uh -huh. they don't quilt, but they'll bring a sandwich and come and join the group there just for the visiting. Oh, really? And uh -huh. that's, yeah, and it's, it, you know, it's just, uh, there isn't too much to do up here, here, and they get a kick out of it. They get all the news, honey. Yeah. I, I always used to tell them when I first joined the group, you know, I was an awful shocker to the ladies when I first joined because, I mean, it's very hard for me not to be uh, saying what I think. And I used to kid him. I'd say, well, if you stay home from a meeting, that's the day we talk about you. <laughs> <laughs> so it's gotten to be the byword there. They, all the ladies say it now. You can't stay home next week because <laughs> that's the day we can talk about you. And it's always... <laughs> But it, it, it's so different when I think of I, I Lots of times I just lay there and think about how different it is from those first years, because I really wasn't so happy the first years. Uh -huh. uh -huh. I mean, it, was, it wasn't my kind of thing. <laughs> uh -huh. But you kept doing it. Oh, yes. The, I was there, and there was nothing to, you know, to no one else. Uh -huh. You know, uh, uh, a few times I've mentioned, I've said, well, now, we have to make some arrangements for if anything happens to me, and everybody looks at me and just shuts me up. I mean, I think they would just hit me with something. I mean, there's no no way. It, it's just taken for granted that I'm going to be there. Uh -huh. but, uh, uh -huh. And Ethel said to me, Phil, or, uh, Dick's mother, she said, Kathleen, the reason I wanted to take the group to my house and keep them going is for you, because she said, I wanted you to know we were doing our job. And she does. I mean, she, she really takes over. But of course, she would, she belongs to the grain group. Uh -huh. There's a, there's a, uh, uh, regulation ladies aid down there where they do all the things yeah, they're supposed regulation. to. <laughs> I don't know what else to call them. I mean, they follow all the rules. And, uh -huh. and uh, she belongs to that group down there. But uh -huh. she's just so devoted to this. She she always says when she's in Florida, every Tuesday she thinks about the group and what they're doing and having a good time. Uh -huh. See, we, ha we don't have too many in the wintertime mm -hmm. because so many people do go to Florida. Yeah. And it's a much smaller group, which makes it nice if you're going to work in somebody's house. Right. Because it isn't like working in the hall. In the hall, we have two group, the two quilts on all the time. Oh, you do? Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yes, we have two frames going and on. And do you do them for some purpose? Do you raffle them off? Or? Uh, we make one a year ourselves and raffle that off at the Grainville Fair. Uh -huh. But that's the only one we ever sell or raffle off. Uh -huh. Otherwise, it's people make a quilt at top, and right. they don't have room in their house to do it, and they bring it to me. Oh. And then a great many people find them in these country places, you know, in the old days they made these quilts and they didn't have anything else to do and they put them in the attic thinking, well, someday I'm going to quilt them, you know. And uh, people find trunks full of them. Now, Ethel, where she, in her place, I don't know how many she found in a trunk that we've done. Wow. And uh, I had another lady who is in Hawaii who, uh, she bought a, a country place up here and she found a lot of them in, in her attic, and she brought them to me. And I pointed, we have quilted. I must forget that I'm not to say I, honey. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, we've quilted for this lady in Hawaii, a great many quilts. Yeah. And we had them from out of state. I had people from Massachusetts and Connecticut. I had some upstairs now from Connecticut. They send them in. Oh. I mean, if, if, if you're... How do they know about you? Well, it, it, we'll say you're the daughter here, and the mother up there knows something about quilts. And the first thing you know, I get communication from them, and they want to know how much to charge for quilts. Oh. And the other day, a girl in Newburgh called me. Uh -huh. And, uh, well, the other day, it's weeks ago. And uh, she wanted one done for February because she was going out to Ohio to her mother, and her mother had left this quilt with her, didn't know what to do with it, because not too many groups do this anymore. Uh -huh. But, uh, and we make a lot of money, honey. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because it's it's a specialized craft, you know, and uh, there isn't too many groups do it. Not the way we do. There are groups who make quilts and sell them. 
but see, ours is entirely different. Ours is taking care of other groups, other people's quilts. Yeah. And uh, in, uh, we have a very small congregation in church, and our group makes more money for the church than they take in in contributions. We wow. kept our church going. Absolutely. Wow. That's great. And, of course, then we also demonstrate. That's another way we get customers. Uh, we uh, demonstrate at the Grainville Fair every year. Uh -huh. We've been down to Museum vill Village, you know, below Goshen. Oh, yes. Yeah, we've, we've demonstrated down there. We demonstrated, we used to always demonstrate in Pucky Huddle up here, uh -huh. where you come over the mountain, when they uh -huh. had that place there, and they'd have their uh, quilt festival every year. Oh. All, uh, I went up with all my ladies and, and demonstrated while we were up there. Wow. Two or three days at a time. Uh-huh, yeah. uh -huh. So in that way, we're pretty well known, and of course, uh, the story of our cr uh, quilting group not long ago was in the uh, Middletown paper. Oh, because was we, it? Oh yes, mm -hmm. oh. we had a um, um, reporter came up and interviewed us from there, uh -huh. and uh, it was the big spread in the paper. So of course uh -huh. they know a lot about it. Wow, I'll be able to see that. I think I have it right here. Children, do you have two? And, um, you taught your daughter to quilt? No, she doesn't know anything about quilting. No, no, she's, she's very talented when it comes to, to craft, and things, but uh -huh. she has never. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, it was funny, it didn't have, I don't know why, they, they took an awful lot of pictures, and I don't know why they put that one in, but uh, I, we didn't even know they took that one. Uh, the the uh, cup up there on the mantel belongs to my father, and uh -huh. he, he always Look used that, that horrible, that great, tremendous, great big cup. And uh, he was hit by a car and killed, and uh, uh, when we were clearing out the things, my sister threw it out, and I took it back, and I said, oh, I want to have something done with that. Dad always had that cup. And Ethel said, oh, let me put the some flowers in it. She makes dried flower arrangements. So she came in that morning. The photographer was in the other room, and uh, she, when she came in, she gave, handed me the cup, and she said, Kathleen, what do you think of your cup? And I threw my arms around and kissed her, and I didn't even know he took the picture. <laughs> and lo and behold, when the paper came out, he had the picture. And what, what was his name? Fred Wright. It's just dead on there. Oh, I see. See, yeah. it was one. Okay. I we couldn't even remember. He had it so many years. We couldn't even remember which whether it was my sister or I who bought it for him. But um, but she Beautiful. made the arrangement, and I thought it was so pretty. And, and we were both so surprised because they didn't tell us a thing. They just took pictures and uh -huh. asked questions. And, uh -huh. wow. and so, do you do any of your own quilts? I mean, do you work on on your own and as well as oh yes mm -hmm. yeah any member uh, really comes ahead if they want it right away they come ahead as customers because uh, Apple makes uh, quilts and uh, and different my my daughter-in-law uh, when she married my son of course I had always made my own quilts you know and uh, so she was crazy about the quilts and I made her one for Christmas and uh, the first year they were married when she came up I gave her this package with a quilt in 
and she cried all over the place and hugged and kissed me and she kept saying, I never could make a quilt. I never could make a quilt. And I said, oh, yes, you could. Uh -huh. And I really didn't, I didn't push her. She came to a few meetings and that was it. You know, she can make nicer quilts now than I do. Yeah. And, and she's so, dev she's a devoted quilter. I mean, everything has to be. And she, of course, the difference with her, I do the traditional. I pick out the one that, but she designs her own. She has made the most oh, really? beautiful ones I mean, uh -huh. that, that she just designed without any help from anybody because she's talented. Uh -huh. But uh, it's amazing in this length of time that she's been married for 16 years now. That she has come a long ways and she's done so much. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But it was so funny, she couldn't dream that she could ever make a quilt that uh -huh. was out of her. And a lot of people do that. I mean, we had a lot of people who come in and say, Oh, I don't know anything about it. I, I've never sewed or that kind of thing. And they start and really love it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's a shame they don't have more uh, groups. They don't. Because when, when they first asked me about um, uh, sending somebody up, for the, Quil or the Quilters Hall of Fame. Yeah. Of course, naturally, I uh, nominated Bertha because she's my oldest member and she's a beautiful quilter. Of course, she's getting too old now. She does still quilt what she can, but I mean, her work isn't like it used to be, and, uh -huh. and it's kind of sad. But um, it's it's hard for her because she's not that well. But when they asked me about a, well, a group, for uh, Sullivan County, of course, that's we're the Sullivan County group, uh -huh. and uh, I put it in the paper. I tried to find groups that did the kind of work so that there would be nominees, and I couldn't find any group. Oh, really? No, there are, you're no. the only one in Sullivan. There was some teaching groups. There was some teachers that was teaching people, but it really wasn't quilting. It was just a teacher teaching, and I wanted to find somebody so badly to nominate. You know, besides my own group, and that's how come that all three of us see the first year Bertha was nominated uh -huh. and of course chosen and uh, the next year they uh, spoke to me about it and I said no I do not want to do it I want one of the girls to do it because to me that was a lot more important yeah and uh, lo and behold I went in one day and they had it all arranged yeah. uh, so I didn't have any choice yeah and then the next year uh, Martha Denman came and she was she wanted to be nominated, and so I told her I would, and she was chosen. Uh -huh. But I can't find any other groups down in Sullivan County, you know, to... Isn't there, do you know, um, in the Delaware Valley, I know that there was a quilt show recently in, um, Narrowsburg? Yeah. There might, so there might be a group out there. Yeah, but know. you see, that isn't... See, they pick one from each county, Sullivan... Uh -huh. Ulster. They have a very active ones in Ulster County. Yeah. That's that's Stone Ridge. That's a very active group. Right. And uh, I, I guess they have more than one there, but in Sullivan County, over in this section, doesn't seem to be. Because uh -huh. I called a, a couple of people. I called a lady in Monticello who advertised for quilters, but what she wanted was just to teach them. Yeah. I mean, she, she uh, wanted a class, and they've had a couple of classes up in Roscoe, which would be Sullivan County but not, uh, yeah. you know, church groups that do it. Yeah. And I, I even sent the, the notice into the paper and asked anybody to contact me who knew of any group and never got any response. Hmm. So we seem to be about the only one. Wow. So you said that you do traditional patterns. Yeah. Um, do you have any that are your favorites? Some that you that you seem to do more than others. Or? I like stars. I, yeah. I really do. I love star quilts. There's so many variations of stars. Uh huh. And uh, I've made different uh, star quilts. I usually give them away. I've given my daughter. I don't know how many. And of course, my daughter-in-law. Uh huh. And uh, then, of course, my husband has grandchildren. He has three granddaughters, and I've given each one of them and his daughter one. Uh huh. Mine usually go away. I have some. But uh, usually I, I give them away. Uh huh. Uh huh. So stars are pretty difficult to get to. I mean, they're, they're, they're a little hard, yes. Yeah. Right, right. But I, I, lo I love to see the stars. And then, of course, I have done just the, the regular squares, you know, that uh -huh. you use. And I've done different ones. I don't like the applique. I don't like applique at all. How come? I don't know. I just uh -huh. don't like applique. It's. it's uh, something that. Uh, I love putting blo cutting blocks and putting them together and something. Now my daughter-in-law loves the applique because, and they are prettier. I mean, when you yeah. when you applique quilt, but I just don't like to do that. I mean, it's all that pressing the seam underneath and all the applique business around, and, and yeah. it's tedious for me. Yeah. But I have fun with it with the others. I just love them. Really. So, what, which part of the process do you like the best? Uh, the, like from cutting to quilting. Quilting. 
you like the quilting yeah. part? Mm -hmm. And I do like to sit here and make blocks because it's kind of fun, yeah. you, you know, when you finish the block to look at it. But uh -huh. the, really, the quilting is the fun for me. Yeah. I wish I had room in my house. My house is so small to be able to quilt at home. But you see, yeah. if I put a quilt up in here, I've got to take it down every night. And, and yeah. the, if you have a room like we had in the big farmhouse where you could go in any time you want to and quilt, that's easier, you know. Yeah, but right. when you have a little spare time, and, and that's what Ethel does. She has a Mrs. Coombe. She has a beautiful uh, glass-in porch, and she has a quilt out, our quilt out there. And when she wants to work, she goes out. She has a little time to she wants to spend, and then it's fun that way. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But, uh... Do you have any colors that you favor? The color scheme? I love the blues. Yeah. I love blues. I've, I've worked with in all the colors, and, and, and I also like the, when they, a conglomeration, I mean, like when you take all kinds and put them in together, but blues are really my favorite. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It's, it's nice to work with. Do you have a, a fabric collection, or do you, what, do you um, use actual scraps, or do you buy fabric for specific quilts? As you no, go? usually, uh, I, I, so many of my quilts have been done with pieces I have left over, you uh -huh. know, from sewing. Like, um, when my children were small, I made their little dresses and their little pajamas and all that sort of thing. And all through their, of course, I was then had quilting in the back of my mind. Someday when I retire, I'm going to do it. Oh, great. And so every time that I made anything for them, I had a big suitcase in the attic, and I'd go and put some of the pieces in there. Oh. And finally, after I started quilting again, I made my daughter a quilt. And, and it's really funny because she'll look at it and she'll say, Oh, Mother, that's a little dress. Remember when you made me that dress? Yeah. <laughs> and there's the drapes from, from uh, Ryan, her, or her brother's. Uh, windows, uh -huh. cowboy prints. It's just a conglomeration of all kinds of things. Uh -huh. And I do that a lot now because you can, if you want to make a star quilt, you can use different. You don't have to use two or three colors. Yeah. Uh, you can use different colors. Uh -huh. But now, uh, later on, I have gone more to buying things and, and, you know, matching them up. But in the old days, I never did that. I used pieces uh -huh. that were... But, uh, no, it, it's... If you make a star quilt and you make a quilt block and you make it out of different colors, then the next one is is more interesting. You want to see how it's going to turn out. Uh -huh. you know, it, it it just snowballs like that. Oh, it's I really see. fun to do it that. You way. don't really like you don't sort of see the whole quilt before you start it. No, a lot of people do, but yeah. I don't. I, mean, uh -huh. I, I just love it. And the, the funny part of it is, I hate riding on airplanes, and I ride on airplanes a great deal. Why? Uh, well, my daughter lives in Alabama. Oh. Okay. And. Uh, of course, and my husband's, all of his family lives out in Iowa. And of course, I ride on planes, and I'm deathly afraid on planes. Uh -huh. And I always take a little bag of, of quilt blocks with me, and I sit and sew uh -huh. quilt blocks from that. And they, the women get the greatest kick out of that. But I can get so absorbed in that that I don't think about flying. I have to do it. I've seen people knitting and crocheting uh -huh. and all kinds of things on planes, but I have to make quilt blocks. <laughs> I mean, I, it's really funny. I've never traveled. At, on a plane in, in these later years that I didn't take books off the line. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That's great. Yeah, it's really true. Uh-huh. It gets to be a thing with you. I mean, it's it's just like poor old Bertha that you're going to see today. She's a very sick woman, and she's uh, discouraged and all. But when she, if she doesn't show up at a meeting, we know. Now, last week she didn't make it, and I called her the next morning. And her back was so bad, and she felt real bad. Uh -huh. And if she doesn't come, we know there's something, you know, really bad uh -huh. wrong with her because she just, she has to get there. She comes with her cane, you know, she staggers there, and it's her one big thing in the week is to get there. Uh huh. Uh huh. What do you think it is about quilting, if you can say, that's so appealing? It's creative. Uh huh. I mean, you you create something. I mean, I can't paint a picture. I can't write a poem, I can't do anything, but I can create a quilt. Uh -huh. And uh, when I finish it, it's something that I've done. It's it's like the people who do needlepoint and all those things. You know, you just feel that you give something to it. it, it and now it, it is it's very creative. Uh -huh. and, and it has been such a fulfillment with me because I've gotten so much recognition. I mean, not me, but my group mainly, you know, people knowing about our quilting. And, and uh -huh. it, it's... It's really a remarkable. I, I wish, sincerely wish, that everybody could have one thing they did. I don't mean quilting, 
and be as devoted to it. Because now I have a sister who lost her husband, and she's completely lost, and there's nothing. She, she wouldn't no more pick up a needle and thread. She does absolutely nothing. Well, her day is filled by wandering around and moaning and watching television. This is personal. It's not, not supposed to be on there. Can you erase it? <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> but I mean, it's uh, if you have something to do like me, now when when I have had this this problem, when I came from the from the hospital this last time, my daughter-in-law rushed me right up to the quilting because she knew that it would take my mind off from it and I would forget it. Uh -huh. And by the time I came home, I was relaxed. Where if I had come home, you know, and tried to do something else that I, you know, maybe wash the dishes or something, I would be just as tense as ever. Yeah. Uh -huh. But it is. It, it's relaxation for any and and anyone who doesn't like it is never going to accomplish anything because you have to like it. There's uh -huh. no question about that. Uh -huh. And and we have uh, uh, when we had our meetings down here, uh, this one lady that came, she was taking care of her grandson, and I don't know how many years she took care of him in the summer when he went to go to school. How many years he came to quilting? This was the best little boy. As I love him beyond anything. He's now 14, and he doesn't come now. But up until the time he was at least 12, every week when she came, he came, and wow. he'd he'd sit there and and and, uh, and color pictures, do all kinds of things, never seem to get bored, have a good time with the ladies. And uh, when he, he he was always talking about instead of saying Mrs. Rawls, he'd say our leader. Uh. And when he was little, he started that. When he got went home with his grandmother, he said to her one night, he said, well, uh, what did our leader say about so-and-so? And, -so? and she, she was just laughing her head off. Well, he loved that, you know. So from there, I've been the leader. And when I had my operation and came down to my sister's to stay, uh, when I was, uh, they had taken me into the doctor's. And while I was gone, this little, this boy, he's about 14 now, came up to the door with a, with a flower vase with four yellow roses in it and handed it to my sister. She didn't know who he was and he said he wanted to give it to the leader. Well, she didn't know what he was talking about. No. And when I came home, she was so embarrassed. She said, well, I thought it was a delivery boy, but here's this little fellow who was with me so many years bringing me roses because oh, I'd had the operation. That's and that's the kind of group we have. That's why I love it. I mean, it's, it's, uh -huh. it's family. It, it's the, the most amazing thing to me that people, and we rarely ever, I don't think I, I I don't think I would need any more than one hand for the uh, you know problem we've ever had. Uh huh. No no way. I mean, uh, there's if somebody doesn't agree, we we express our opinion, and the minister always laughs if anybody comes up to get our opinions. If you say because we each have if we have a different opinion, don't mean a thing. We don't quarrel about it. We just tell them what we think. But it, it's <laughs> really no. No, it 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 doesn't sound. In this world today, I see when I was in Everything, I belonged to every kind of a group, and everybody was beating everybody else over the head if they didn't agree with me. Uh -huh. But we had none of that. I mean, there's uh -huh. none of it at all. It sounds wonderful, yeah. No, anybody will tell you that, that uh, knows our group, that that's the way it is. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, do you ever use a lap group here? Use what? Do you, have you ever used a lap group, or do you, always, do you always quilt on frame? On frame. Yeah. I uh, I love to do things now. See, you can do these, but this kind of thing. I have one of four of these. I bought a couple of them. I sit and do that kind of thing on my lap. You quilt well, those. Yeah, uh -huh. You know, I can work with that. Uh -huh. But we never bother with that otherwise. I mean, it seems to. But when I could, you know, when I was sitting around, I, I love to work on things like that. Because that's quilting, of course. Yeah. Uh -huh. The same as the other, but. Uh, it's just something small I can work on. Uh -huh. That there and doesn't cause any. Uh -huh. It's really harder to do it that way than it is on, on a frame. Because it's not small. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's much easier on a frame. Uh -huh. Because I have a, a, a wooden, a small wooden frame that I have there. When somebody comes in and wants to learn to quilt, they start on that. Oh, uh -huh. And uh, it's a little hard, even on the small frame. Yeah. But uh, they're always surprised when they go on a big frame about how much easier it is. Mm -hmm. oh. No, it's really, it's really a, a thing to take up your time and make you think about different things. Uh huh. Uh -huh. I had a question on it, but my tongue was important. I can't remember it now. Oh, okay.
wish I could help you if I'd shut up. You probably no, no. <laughs> it would have to do with something you were saying. Now I can't think of it. That's all right. Um, so why do you think your your stepmother closed it? Was it for the same kinds of reasons as you? I mean, no, that was necessity. Necessity, yeah. Because uh, you see what we she used to make, and in, in those days, long before you were in this world, <laughs> uh, they made quilts in order to stay warm. Yeah. And you cut up the big heavy qu uh, coats and, and uh, oh, uh -huh. yeah, you used heavy, very, you couldn't quilt that, you had to tie it, you know the difference. And uh, of course we had, uh, our house, we didn't have blankets and things, we had quilts. Wow. Uh, but they were the big heavy ones and it's very cold here, so they were, they were tied. Uh -huh. But uh, then of course we sewed our clothes, always our dresses and things like that. Wow. And she'd have these leftover pieces, and of course she loved to work with them. Uh -huh. And that's how come she would, it would uh, they were pretty quilts, uh -huh. the, but the utility quilts were not pretty, and oh, uh, yeah. they were very, very, yeah. they were just utility quilts. Yeah. I mean, very difficult to wash, I mean, they, they you had to use them for years without washing them, because, uh -huh. and, and in those days we had cotton, you know, for inside. Now with the polyesters, it's beautiful. You put them in the washing machine, uh -huh. just like you do anything else. And so the batting was like lumps of cotton. Yeah, when you washed it, it would it would it uh, go into lumpy. It wasn't wasn't pretty at all. But of course, that was why she was in quilting, and she loved to sew anyway. And of course, uh, you, you never threw anything away. I mean, you if you cut a piece off from a. <laughs> the, I look now when I think about it because I've seen her take old dresses and take the. Uh, the good parts out and uh, make aprons and quilts out of it, you know. You'd mm -hmm. cut out the parts that was worn. There's always the elbow worn and the breast worn, that kind of thing. You yeah. Use the rest. And now I think when I get these beautiful materials, you know, it's such a joy. But she liked doing it. She, We always had one setting up. And then, and when we could afford to, have, to go and buy, I remember her making a wild goose chase one time and when she could go to Grainsville and buy the material and the color she wanted. And she was just as thrilled as though it was Christmas. Yeah. You know, to bring it home and be able to cut it up and not use the things that uh -huh. make do. Huh. Were, so were any of those quilts saved? Do you have them? No. No? No. No, we really didn't. I mean, uh, uh, of course, uh, her she, uh, two, she had two daughters of her own. Mm -hmm. And her daughters, I guess, have a couple that she made. But, uh -huh. I mean, I don't myself. Uh -huh. I mean, uh -huh. Because I went on to making my own and, and uh, of course, never really hinted that I would like to have one. Sometimes you have to hint if you really want any. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, so did a lot of women that I talked to made one before they were married, kind of like a hope chest thing. Mm -hmm. Did you do that? Yeah, I made two before I was married. And what kind were they? Well, they were the kind that where you used uh, some of it old material and some of it new material. Uh -huh. You know, because I didn't have the money to buy new. and. Uh, they weren't very practical. I made one real heavy one because, you see, that would have been over 50 years ago. Oh. And I made one of those ugly, heavy ones that I'm talking about. Because when you use those materials, you know, you didn't have reds and, and greens and blues. You had browns, the practical things. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the utility one uh, was made with coats and I made squares and, and tied it and all. And, uh, of course, it was wonderful to keep you warm. Yeah. And because I had made it before I was married, it was in the attic. And the funny part of it was that my daughter loved that. I, and I never could, and they were so heavy that you could barely turn over. <laughs> and she got it out of the attic when she was quite, just a little kid, you know, she was quite young. And she wanted to use it on her bed. And I said, all right. So she used it on her bed and she just loved it. Uh -huh. And I, I never could figure it out. But afterwards, when I was talking to somebody that understands these things, they said they thought it gave her a feeling of security, the weight of it. Yeah. Uh -huh. they, that it wasn't, I, I kept saying, that thing is so ugly. Why in the world? And I, I kept saying to her, well, have you, do you have it on there? Because Mother Mary made it when she was young. No. No, she just liked it. And afterwards, when, and during a conversation with a friend of mine, I said, this is strange. And she said, you know what that is, Kathleen? It's security for her. It's so heavy over her uh -huh. in the cold that she, that's what she likes because uh -huh. there was nothing pretty about it. Uh -huh. And there was nothing about it that you could imagine liking except to stay warm. Uh -huh. But that, and <coughs> that went the way of all things, of course. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was about worn out and I got rid of it finally. But uh -huh. uh, 
you know. But I was so glad to be rid of those quilts. I mean, I just saved them because of that. <laughs> well, because the ones now are very precious, but those in those days they weren't. I mean, just because. Oh, okay. So, you, did you make it before you were married because that was kind of a traditional thing to do, or because you were going to need it? Mainly because I was going to need it. Yeah. That was the thing. Uh -huh. And of course, my stepmother encouraged me to do it. She said, "Well, when you're married, you're going to have to have quilts, you know." Uh -huh. And so, uh, and I liked working with her. I always liked working with her. Wow. And so that was the reason that I made it mainly because she always encouraged me to do those things. Uh -huh. And. Uh, we made it together, but uh, that's that's the and then of course there were so many years that I didn't see her. I lost my husband after the children. Well, my daughters, my children were six and eight, and of course I went to work. Yeah. And then you don't have uh, time for things like that, you know. And so when I came up here, it was really kind of fun to get back into it, you know. I never dreamed it was going to be yeah, as it important as breathing. <laughs> <laughs> it was just something I was going to do. Uh -huh. So what, when your husband died and you started working, what did you do? I worked in school uh -huh. because I wanted to go with my children. Uh, I didn't want babysitters. Oh. oh, God, don't let anybody hear this or I'll be run out of this community because I, really? I don't believe in babysitters. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm very unpopular. Don't no, don't tell anybody. <laughs> because I'm very unpopular from my belief. I think Mama should stay home and take care of the children. Oh, I see. See. Okay. I'm a liberated woman. I do as I please, and I travel all the time now. I go on all kinds of tours and all, but I don't think you do that when your children are small. Uh -huh. I don't know why I'm telling you this. You, you're going to think she's a weirdo. No, no. <laughs> you're entitled to your opinion. I don't have any children, so I have to worry about that. Well, that is, see, when, when my husband died, uh, the children were only six and eight, uh -huh. and uh, my father and stepmother would have taken them in and, and looked at them, but I've always had that feeling of, of wanting to do my own, and so I went to school at, at, to work in the school cafeteria. Oh, uh -huh. and my mother the, did the same thing. Really? <laughs> yeah, I worked with a dietitian, and I didn't have to because uh, the, uh, my doctor now well, wanted me to go in nursing. I had had a little bit of it, and he wanted me to finish, and he'd give me his patients that had money, you know, that didn't need any uh, special care like needles or something until right. I got I got my training and it, I would have loved to been, done it as far as the inside of me that part but I didn't want the children so I used to go to work every morning for 10 years 11 years I went to work every morning on the school bus with the children That's and came home with them at night <laughs> and so I uh, they never really missed Mm -hmm. having a mother away from them because that's the one thing that I feel so strongly about. And, uh -huh. and I always used to say they may turn out to be criminals, prisoners, and everything, but I'm, I'm going to do my share and I'll, that's uh -huh. the rest. That's and I'm very proud of them. They're wonderful children. I don't have a complaint in the world. I mean, uh -huh. my son is married and he has two little ones and he's one of the greatest guys. I don't care if he is my son, I still say. And my, <laughs> da and my daughter is uh, the same way. I mean, she's she can't have children. She lost five, oh my goodness. but uh, she couldn't carry them. I mean, she just oh, uh, three of them lived a few days, but they weren't old enough to survive. And oh. So anyway, but she's a wonderful girl, and, mm -hmm. and I don't have any complaints. I mean, I figure I did my share, and, and they turned out fine. So I mm -hmm. and my daughter's amazing. My daughter-in-law is an antique dealer, uh -huh. but she wouldn't take a job away from home either. So. And my, I always say to my son, how did you find one like that? And he got laughing. He said, well, I asked them all before I got very serious. He said, I told her I'd make the living, and she was to bring up the kids. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Chauvinist, see, we are. <laughs> you are funny. So I thought of the question I was going to ask you oh. before. What do you think makes a good quilt? A good quilt? Yeah. I mean, a good quilter. What's the, what's a good quilter or a bad quilter? What is it that makes a good quilt? Is it something that? Well, the, the main the main thing is uh, the best of materials. You can't skimp on things. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're going to buy material, that you've got to buy the best. Mm -hmm. And we it's available now. That's the thing. In the old days, it really wasn't because the old quilts, <coughs> as you may <coughs> excuse me, you may know, uh, they. Uh, uh, used to run. I mean, you couldn't wash them too well. Okay. The reds were beautiful and all, but they never, the reds never stayed. Mm -hmm. And now we have everything to do with. And also, uh, I mean, we have good threads and all the things. Mm -hmm. And as I say, the person that's going to quilt it, whatever makes a good quilt is somebody loving to quilt. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. if you're going to do that as a chore, it's going to be dreadful. 
Yeah. I don't think anybody could quilt as a chore. Yeah. Uh -huh. I know I couldn't because I'd get so nervous I'd run up the wall or something because if you felt that you had to do this and it was a duty, it, yeah. it's, uh, and there, it, we each have our thing. I mean, you have your thing, I have mine, and, and lots of people can come in here and talk to me. But you have a personality that brings out things that I'm amazed that I'm saying to you. <laughs> and uh, that does, it, 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 we're born. I mean, it's like musicians. Uh, these people are born to be what they, mm -hmm. and there are people who don't make the most of their potential, but it's still mm -hmm. there, I think, the kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I have a brother-in-law next door who is, uh, plays a fiddle. He's never had a lesson in his life. He plays a fiddle better than most professionals. Well, no. I mean, and it's just one of those things. He just loved it and would get any old fiddle that didn't amount to anything. Now, of course, he has better things, but he just had that was there. I mean, the gift of music. It's not Lance Hamilton. Yeah. Oh, I've heard of him. Have you? Yes. That's my brother in my husband. My first husband. Uh huh. Brother. Uh huh. And uh, isn't that amazing? Yeah. Well, uh, someone gave me his name as someone that I should talk to sometime. Um, Herb Halfrecht, who has a collection from of Petco folk songs from Camp Woodland that Norm Studer collected. Apparently, Norm Studer knew Lance Hamilton. Uh -huh. So we're planning. I'm, I'm going to talk to him sometime. Oh well, he lives the second house up. The, uh -huh. uh, well, the first house up, he built his house on our property, see. Oh. Uh, I was married to his brother as for my first husband. Uh -huh. And then uh, that's how I met my second husband, who's here. Uh -huh. uh, he, of course, they all lived up here to be his brother-in-law. He was there, and that's how I met him, because he was an engineer in South America, and he was only home once in a while. He, he bought this place just as a retreat. Oh. Uh -huh. And, uh, of course, we got there, me, and we got married to it. So. Mm -hmm. But uh, they built uh, their house on our right next to us. Wow, great! Wow, it's a small world. It is. <laughs> um, but you also mentioned that Bertha, now that she's older, her quilt is not doing as well as she might. No, she she, th she says herself, and she can't quilt very long at a time. I you see, she only has one eye she can use now. Uh -huh. And but she still struggles a lot. Crusty. I haven't heard anyone. <laughs> you know just what it means, don't you? Yeah, I, yeah. I get a sense from what you're saying. But um, but it really describes. It's a very descriptive word. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's probably not in your vocabulary, but it's but really. It, but it's a word that I mean, I've met four people from this area, and all of them have used the word crusty. Isn't that funny? I haven't heard anyone else around say crusty. It's, it's definitely funny. a Clarendon Gramsville word. Yeah, mountains. You know, it's just a. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. It's funny. Well, if I have one, uh, you know, started, then lots of times in the evening when I'm watching television, I come out, or, you know, and, and well, I rarely ever do much in the daytime, uh, yeah. because, you know, when I'm home, because in the morning I do my housework, and then after lunch my husband has to take a nap because he only has one lung and he's not that well, uh -huh. and so he, I have to be very quiet, so I read my newspapers or my books or things then, but in the evening if I have one that's... Uh, you know, started, then I work on it. But there's no set, really set time. I mean, now maybe I would go three months and not start a quilt. Uh -huh. And uh, then I don't bother with it at night. I sew on something small like that. Oh, uh -huh. But if I have one going, then I hate to put it down. And after supper, after I do this, I like, can watch all this. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. One of those, you know, pick up work uh -huh. thing that makes a lot. If I were to, I'm, after talking to all of you, Paul's family, I'm dying to learn to do this. I haven't learned to do it yet. What kind of 
what would you start on if you were me, just starting out? Well, the log cabins are beautiful. Yeah. And you're the kind of person who could kind of, there are people who can't uh, do them too well, but the log cabins are really beautiful. They're just strips. And if you concentrate and get your strips in the right place, that's, that's, yeah. The, uh, Bertha, the one you're going to see, I don't, I've forgotten how many of those she's made. Yeah. But uh, that's, that's really, I mean, that's what I would pick uh -huh. if you were going to do it. Of course, there's simple stars. There's all kinds of books and all kinds of things. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But uh, it's amazing how you, uh, uh, some of the stars are difficult, I mean. Well, but, I've seen them, you yeah. know, you have to get those points yeah. exactly, and I can't imagine that skill. That's right. But I, I, th I think log cabin, because there's so many variations, I mean, you, you, yeah. the way they're put together. Uh -huh. But it's just actually strips, and they uh -huh. are beautiful. They're so rewarding when you actually get them done. I made one of those for my daughter-in-law, too. Uh -huh. And uh, she wanted something in, a, in a brown, tan, and yellow. And uh -huh. so I made one for her. And I made her a double wedding ring, but that's pretty hard, too. A yeah. Wedding ring. But uh, there's a lot of... Um, I have so many books and things that, uh, uh, you know, give you so many different patterns. And, mm -hmm. and uh, but I, as I would, I, I really think that the log cabin one would do. Okay. Can you look at a picture and figure it out? Figure yeah. Figure out a pattern without instructions? Uh, a lot of them, yeah. Yeah. If it's, it's squares and half squares and strips, I can figure it that way. Uh -huh. Of course, if it's a complicated pattern, you can't. You have to have a pattern. Uh -huh. But see, when my uh, stepmother used to make them, you couldn't send them to the magazine and get a pattern. You, you made your pattern. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, we always did. Uh, you know, she, she would uh, see a picture or see somebody have a quilt, and you took some... Uh, I have one quilt that, that's really a circus. Um, my stepmother, that's... See, whenever she would go someplace and she would see a quilt that she kind of liked, she would uh, cut and make a block to see whether she wanted to do it. Uh -huh. And after she was gone, I found a box of things in our old farmhouse where she had piled up all these patterns. Oh, so uh -huh. I put them all into one quilt. Oh my goodness. And it was one of the most difficult things that I ever did because there were different sized blocks. Oh yeah. It was a crazy thing. Uh -huh. But all the blocks that she made are in this quilt. That's wonderful. Uh, but uh, see, she had not, not one of them was ever made with a regulation pattern. They were uh -huh. just made the ones she cut out, and that's why I want to save it. And I am a very sentimental person about things like that. Uh -huh. And I, uh, when I brought them down, of course, my sister is the practical one. She said, what in the world are you going to do with all that conglomeration of quilt blocks? And I said, I don't know, but i got to do something. Well, she said, you're going to have a house full of sofa pillows. You can take a block and put it in the middle, you know, and for sofa pillows. And I said, no, I didn't want to do that, so I made a quilt out of it. It's nothing to brag on, but I, I like it. <laughs> it sounds great. Do well, they that, do that. Do you think that that's, uh, um, that's another one of my questions? Do you have a quilt that's more memorable than any, other, any of the other ones you've made? Well, the, the, really, the memorable one would be the one I made of my children's things that I gave my daughter. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah that, that is really my memory quilt because that's the one that... Uh, uh -huh. And she always has it. She doesn't. Uh, she keeps it on the foot of the bed, and she doesn't want to use it. She doesn't want to wear it out. Yeah. But it's always there, and and every every single solitary block in there, I could tell you where it came from. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. But that that really was. And I'm very very fond of this one for my mother-in-law or my stepmother too. But that that one that I made for my children, I love, and I'm proud of. That was a star. It was a uh, uh -huh. one uh -huh. of the traditional stars. Uh -huh. But. Uh, and she loves it as much as I do. That's the nice part of, um, of making quilts. When you give them to somebody that appreciates the work and the time and things mm -hmm. you have put into them. And I've been very lucky because in the first place, my daughter-in-law appreciates everything, oh, being an antique dealer and appreciates all this kind of thing. And my own daughter is very sentimental and she appreciates, but I've, I've seen some of my members who were pretty, felt pretty bad, you know, when they worked so hard to, and gave them and saw what happened to them because they had just, yeah. uh, everyone doesn't, uh, people, it's, it, it's so many times um, people, uh, when you're at the fair, when they'll ask you, well, how much are you going to charge for a quilt? And you mention a price and they look so shocked, you know, like, well, they can't imagine. They have no idea how many hours 
and hours and hours it takes from beginning to end to make a quilt. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way if you're going to sell one. I've never sold one, and I, I wouldn't. I, that's the one thing I say that uh, the work I do is done for the people I love. It's, it's, I, but now Bertha, she sold a great many, uh -huh. and uh, which is her privilege. I mean, I'm not criticizing no, that, no. Uh, but um, I just couldn't do it because when I put that much work into something, I, I, there's no money enough. You yeah. Know? Yeah. But I can give it to my stepdaughter or my step grandchildren or something like that. But um, People are, and and sometimes they're when you, they would ask Bertha, I would, they'd say to me, well, where can I buy a quilt? And I'd say, well, Bertha sells quilts. They go to it, and they would absolutely be insulting, you know, the way they'd say, well, well, that price, I mean, that price, like, you're just taking advantage. Well, unless they come and watch, and I've had a little of that, very little, uh, when people have called me or wanted me to do a quilt for them, and I quote a price. Mm -hmm. I never had real trouble except with one lady, but uh, oftentimes they'll be really amazed at the price. Yeah. But they because they have no idea what it's all about. Yeah, and the time and the effort oh. and the planning and. The Lots of times when we've done quilts down here, I said we made about four cents a, an hour. Yeah. <laughs> you you've got a quilt with with eight nine people working on it right. for two days. Right. And uh, with, <laughs> with the wages people get for that, you couldn't charge what it's worth. There's no way. It's just a, an extra income to, to keep our church going. That was what uh -huh. it was for originally. So do you then use the money to keep the group going, or does no, it no, all no. go to the church? Uh, it, uh, um, of course, we pay our electric and our heat and things out of the money we raise. Right. And up until the last two years, we never used one penny for anything. It went straight to the church, whatever they had to have. Uh, we keep account, and we give them a check. They like if they want to pay their heat or they had to I have see. a roof put on or something, we give them a check and I keep my own account. Uh -huh. But <clears throat> for the last two years, I told my ladies our church is getting a much better financial condition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was our turn to have a little fun. Uh -huh. So I made reservations for both for the last two years at Mohawk. And we went up there and had a lunch and then spent the day. Oh, great. And that was their treat. So we have a lot of fun there. I uh -huh. mean, they, uh, uh -huh. And now that, they see, at one time our church was so poor that it was terrible. And as I say, it would have had to go under if it hadn't been for the money we raised. Because uh -huh. it was, and uh, I really didn't, couldn't with a clear conscience do that. Yeah. Uh, a couple of times I took the ladies out to lunch myself and paid for it myself. Mm -hmm. But I just didn't have the heart to take it from the church. But now we got a big request. <laughs> and oh. I feel free to uh -huh. use our money. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And we did use some of our money to have our church hall fixed up. Because, I mean, when I first came up here, when we had a church supper, we used to have church suppers to raise money, too. You, you, we didn't have water in the place, only just the pump. Oh my goodness! Yeah, and and uh, then we put the water to heat, to wash dishes in boilers on the stove. We didn't have it. We had an outside privy. Oh my goodness! Yeah, Ugh. sure. Very very primitive, I'll tell you. <laughs> and if you try to feed 150 people and wash the dishes in between times out of water that you're heating on a stove, it is really a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Understatement. We, we had that for quite a few years when I first came up here. I don't remember just how many, but quite a few. Uh -huh. And of course I had charge of that too, of course, you know, naturally. Uh -huh. And finally this man who used to own the store down here, when he got, he used to say to me, he used to help me a lot, and he used to say, well someday Kathleen, you're not going to have to do this. And when he died, he willed the ladies' aid money to do their kitchen uh -huh. and a bathroom. I mean, and it was not for the church, he didn't will it to, will it to the church, he had quite a bit of money. He will the church some money, but he will this for us so we could have a nice kitchen and bathroom. Wow. And so uh, we really got up into the modern age then, you know. Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but when I tell the young people these stories, you know, they just sit there and, and look at me. I, it just doesn't seem possible. And now, lots of times, you know, really, when I look back, I think of it and I wonder how it happened. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, it does seem amazing, but you must have taken it for granted at the time. Uh, of course. Yeah. I, 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 we didn't even de feel deprived. I mean, <laughs> nobody had told us we were poor, I guess. Yeah. That's, That's the trouble. You see, on the television, they're telling us, <laughs> they're telling us all the time that we're so poor <laughs> and uh, <laughs> underprivileged and everything like that. And it's really funny. 
It's like my television, when I first, of course, I had television, never think that I was the postmaster there at uh -huh. that time. See, after my children grew up, I left the, the school and was postmaster. Uh -huh. And, uh, of course, I had television and everything. We, we, my first husband and I had built our house. It was a small house, but we'd go in. And, of course, when I came up here with Bill, and um, we were first married, I didn't really, I, we, we read a lot and that kind of thing, and I really didn't miss my television. And when I used to go down to the meetings down here, most of the ladies had television by then. And they would talk about all these soap operas. And I came home one night, and my husband has no sense of humor. He's very dour, <laughs> German. And he never knows why on earth he ever married me, I don't know. Opposites attract. <laughs> abs absolutely. <laughs> and I came home one night, and I said, I'm not going down with those ladies anymore. What happened here? I said, well, they all sit there, and they talk about Jane and Grace and Phyllis and all these people, and I, I don't know what they're talking about. It's something to do with television. <laughs> and I said, I sit there like a ninny, and I can't say anything. And he was very serious. Well, I, I didn't re I thought he'd know. And, and then at that time, Bobby um, Kennedy was going through the South, you know, and finding all these poor, deprived people. And I said, another thing, if Bobby Kennedy go by here and he doesn't see a television early on the top, they're going to be sending us relief. <laughs> Well, I get these silly, no, I get these silly streaks when, when I can't, I carry on this conversation, but he just sits and looks at me in amazement, and I can't help myself. I don't know why I do it. I mean, I know. Well, I, I had no idea that the man was taking me serious. I mean, I can't imagine anybody else in the world, only Bill Rolfs, ever taking this seriously. So anyway, my brother-in-law, Rance Hamilton, we were talking about, was driving the mail, because the mail carrier died, and he was driving, so my husband went to help him. So one day the guy call, calls up here at the house and he says, uh, we're awfully sorry because he said, we're not coming, we can't come up to uh, try for a television because um, uh, you're in a dead area and you can't get television where you are. And I said, well, there's some mistake. I didn't order television. <laughs> he said, is your name Rolfs? And I said, yes. And he said, well, he said, yes. He said, the, it's, we have it down here. We're supposed to go out and test for it. But he said, we've tested there before for the Goldines down here. And he said, they... Well, I said, I'm sorry, I don't know anything about it. So I never thought to say anything to him about it. I thought there was a mistake somehow. So the next thing I knew, a man from Woodburn called me. And he said, Mrs. Rolfs, he said, that we're coming up the last of the week to test for television. I said, I haven't ordered television. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and he said, well, I will be up there. He said, your husband asked us to come up there. And I said, well, that's strange. So I said to him when he came home, I said, how come you made up your mind to have television? I said, you said we didn't need television. My wife is going to be just like anybody else. She's, she's going to have a television. Just She's not going to be without a television. I said, Honey, I didn't care anything about television. Well, he said, you're going to have television. So that's how we got our television. All through a silly... <laughs> Wonderful story. Well, every word of it is true, and and probably it's hard for you to believe, but any of the neighbors who know my husband will tell you this is absolutely true because I had, uh, he never had any idea, and I do this all the time. <laughs> I do. You could ask for like a new car or something. Oh, I get that when I want it. I mean, <laughs> yes, I, all I do is mention the new car, and I get it. I mean, no, I have the most wonderful husband in the world. He's. He's, he's serious, and he's grumpy, and he's growly, and all, but I've never asked for anything. Um, uh -huh. I don't get it. I uh -huh. mean, and, and he's bought me beautiful jewelry, I mean, um, uh -huh. and everything like that. But uh, he has, uh, I, I think to myself, how in the world did he ever come to marry me? <laughs> I, I really That's don't. So <laughs> well, I do. I mean, it, it's, it's such a, a strange combination we are, and, and other people have said that to me. And, they, and then what they said, they always ended up saying just what you did, I, I, uh, yeah. opposites attract. Because he said, no, he's been, no, uh, with my two children, he has done everything for my children. That's the one, the one I went, uh, I was a single for 11 years. And mm -hmm. I said I would never marry while well, my children were home. So uh -huh. said, that's another you one of my... You didn't date at all huh? for 11 no, years? No, no, no. Mm -hmm. I started out, I mean... A few times I thought, well, it would be nice to go out to dinner. But I discovered that if you're a widow or a divorcee, it isn't dinner that yes. they're interested in. It doesn't matter if you're a widow or a divorcee. It's if you're single. Nowadays, I mean, that, but in that day I was very naive. I, you know, I just, yeah. um, mm -hmm. 
And uh, I tried. I mean, I, I my sister said, oh, you have to have outside interest. You know, I don't know. She's had four husbands. My and uh, Oh, yes. And she kept saying to me, you have to have outside interest and all this kind of thing. And I didn't really think I did, but I thought this nice man, very nice man, came and asked me to go out to dinner, so I went. And then I tried it different times. I mean, that first, well, not the first year, but it was after the first year. And I tried, and I discovered that this wasn't for me. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, I uh -huh. could buy my own dinner, honey. <laughs> I mean, it was the hamburger and the uh, french fry, but no business was there. Uh, and so when I met my husband the first night, he took me home. He never even kissed me goodnight, and I thought, oh, boy, what a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what else do you think? I uh -huh. mean, after all these... Oh, yeah. oh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And uh, I discovered that... I things have not changed, apparently, in that area. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 no he, he walked me to the front door. And I'm waiting for him to make, uh, when he was going to walk me to the front door, I thought, well, you're not going to get in. <laughs> I mean, uh. But I was waiting for the suggestion. He didn't, and he didn't kiss me or thing. He left, and the next day he called, and he ordered me flowers, and I thought, boy, this, one, is, this one's strange. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so I, I, but that's what happened. That's the only way, because I wasn't really, after all that time, you really, it would just soon be alone in a way, you know. Yeah. It's not, I wasn't lonesome, and I've always had so many things that interest me that I really didn't miss companionship that way. That wasn't the reason I married him. I yeah. mean, it was a little different after the kids were gone, but I still had a lot of uh, friends, uh -huh. you know, and when I went to the hospital, I got 80 get well cards. Wow. And, and all my friends were always very supportive, and I never had any problem. I mean, I guess they like strange people like me around. <laughs> it's a challenge, you know, they never know what's going to happen next. And, but, uh, Somehow or other, I mean, and, and he has, I mean, there's never been a Christmas nor a birthday nor a, a Valentine's Day that I don't get beautiful flowers and, and uh -huh. anything. I mean, it's, it's, it's just uh -huh. his way. He has strange ways that people wouldn't like, but I mean, it's good to me, so that's the main thing. Yeah. And I feel very lucky. I'm very lucky. I'm envious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's a good thing. Yeah, you know, I, I want to take some pictures of you and some of your clothes. Are they accessible? Can oh, you yeah. Them out? yeah. How about that one that you made for your stepmother's cabin? I think that I'll I have to see that. It's up in the attic, I think. I have a lot of things. All right. Well, don't knock yourself out. This, here. The, this, this was the size of this block. Uh-huh. And you had to fit it in, so you had to add something in the corners and also make them fit together. Uh-huh. You know, you had to put strips around them. And it made it real hard, but the blocks would look beautiful. But these are very, some of them, very, very old material. I would have to try to wash this, that's why I yeah. put it away in there. Because it, uh, I know, like that block, I can tell by just looking at the material. Yeah. And the material, too. Oh, yeah, very, yeah. very old. Oh, that's very old. Uh, things. And some are newer. What are some of the names of these? Uh, that's a log cabin. No, no, no. I never remember the names. I have all kinds of books with the names in, but I never remember the names. You know. But now, to see, when you use odds and ends, and this one I, I made just with odds and ends that I had left. But this is the kind you make when you have odds and ends. This one someday, when business is slow, I'll take down and have, uh -huh. have it. Uh, Oh, look at that. It looks great. Yeah, see, so that's an odds and ends. Now, that's... This is a light and dark. Yeah, so I uh, see the light square and the dark and the light and dark. See, it's yeah. strips. You just uh, put your, you have to arrange your material so it, uh, uh -huh. it comes uh -huh. out that way. But, uh, if you see, that's all kinds of stuff, leftovers I had. Wonderful. Let me get a picture of this one. Let's hold it. trunk up in the attic, and I didn't know whether I'd put this one away in there or not, but I didn't. I had it right now. Yeah, 
Sometimes when I'm kind of bored, I start a new quilt, and I, I've got a couple with this one, I've got another one to do. But I don't put mine in while I, see, while I'm making money. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> I put mine in after, when we have a dry spell, which rarely ever happens. On. That's the warm. I, that's the way I keep warm. And you know, we don't have a cellar, and so I, I, where my daughter-in-law gives me one of these every Christmas and birthday and everything else. So I had to wear them all winter long. <laughs> they're they're comfortable. Yeah. Oh, they are the most comfortable thing you can imagine. Well, how do you feel? How do you feel? You want to sit down? Or? Yeah. Well, this is. You can tell I'm so old and decrepit. I couldn't stand that. So old and decrepit. <laughs> about 30. <laughs> yeah, I am 74 years old. Oh, that's not good. You're, you're oh, wrong place. Okay. Sorry. Oh, that's the wrong place. No, I have one on my bed, but I mean, these are all, these are just, uh, I put away, uh, I don't know what the kids will do with them after I'm gone, but I suppose something. <laughs> no, I just love to make them. 
Mm. And uh, as I say, I wouldn't sell them. I've had lots of chances to sell them, but I just can't. Uh, it's nonsense. I mean, Too after, hard. Yeah. well, you put so much time in, and, yeah. and it's just, it's, I guess, wonderful artists sell their paintings and everything like that, but it's for some reason when I put this, I love giving them. You know, this is the thing. I, I just, uh, mm -hmm. but to just go out and sell them, I'm, yeah, too much someday when, love. yeah, well, someday when I get real poor, uh -huh. poorer than I am now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you have a television. <laughs> That's right. I, well, I don't want to be disgraced in front of my neighbors. Now, <laughs> right. Well, it's it's so funny when I when I came home from the hospital, I went down to my sister. She lives in Everstink, and she has a lovely home, small home, but because she's alone, but uh, she has everything. She has a television in every room. She has telephones all over the place. They drove me nuts. Yeah. I mean, uh, and uh, everything that anybody could imagine, she has. Uh -huh. And I used to, she used to say, now, this is the place for you, Kathleen, because I can take care of you. She's got electric heat. She's got everything. And uh, I said, well, I don't know. I don't want to get used to this, because it might be possible that I don't want to go home to what I have. But <laughs> She couldn't live up here at all. She's not uh, a mountaineer. Now, where is she? In Never Sink. Never Sink. Yeah. That's right close to Grainsville. It's just down. Uh -huh. That's where my daughter-in-law has the antique shop. But, uh, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Why don't you... Show me the bottom one here that I haven't gotten a photograph of, and that way you'll be doing something. You won't be so conscious. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't believe I just did this. Did I just put this? Yeah. <laughs> oh, brother. I thought I put everything with a lens cap on, and I realized I couldn't have done everything with a lens cap on, because <laughs> I wouldn't have been able to see you. <laughs> um, now, this is kind of a... Um, what would you like to see written about you? Uh, May, not, not, not me so much. I, I mean, I don't know why I talk so much about me. It's your fault. Well, uh, no. You're the person I want to know about. Uh, no, really and truly, the main thing, I love talking about the group. The group is, is the thing. It's yeah. my thing. Uh -huh. and Because it's so unique as far as I'm concerned. I, I just... I mean, it, it, I I can't explain it. It's funny, uh -huh. and and I think if you talk to any of the rest of them, that you will find the same way. Uh -huh. uh, I mean that that it's it's our group, and that's why I kept saying I must remind myself not to keep to say automatically I because it's not me, uh, because without my group I wouldn't be anything. I mean they're the most supportive, the most wonderful people ever was, and and. As I say, uh, what I'm so proud of is that a Catholic, Jewish, and Protestant, and uh, uh, th th honey, if you were here all day, I could tell you the most beautiful stories about these girls. I have one Catholic girl who is a very devoted Catholic. I mean, I, she is really a devoted Catholic. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, when she came to us, she had some kind of a problem. I have no idea what it was. She never told me. I never asked, but I know she had a problem. And I loved this girl dearly. She was a lot like you. She was about your age, I would imagine. She had children, and uh, one time when she came over to where the girl who was our treasurer then, 
with her husband. She, she brought her husband in to introduce him. And when uh, uh, she went out in the back for something, uh, this girl did, uh, Lena told us to go out the back and look at something like that. And the husband was still in there. And when, Lena, when this, his wife went out, he said, I don't know what kind of a group you have. But he said, my wife has been a different person since she's gotten some quilting. And uh, Lena came back and she said to me, Kathleen, she said, you know, that poor girl has a problem, but I don't know what it is. Well, when I went for my first um, cancer operation, I had a melanoma in my arm. That girl was devastated. And she would come over uh, to the quilting. Of course, I told them, I said, I want everything to go just as though, you know, I was there. And she would leave and go uh, up to the church and light candles. She was going in every day lighting candles for me when I came home. And so when we were talking about it, I have a little trouble. I shouldn't have said it, but everybody thought it was funny. But I have a trouble. Things roll out that I, without me constantly. And uh, she came over and she was hugging me and kissing me. And I said, you know what I heard? And she said, what? And I said, you know, Ethel, somebody told me that they have to pay the Catholic Church because you smoked it all up with the candles you lit for me there. <laughs> and, and, and for a minute she didn't say anything. And then she laughed. And this Christmas, now, she had to leave. She went back to teaching. She's teaching now. And this Christmas, I received the most beautiful Christmas card from her. And she said, it's just a little thank you for all the love you gave me at a time when I needed it so badly. Oh, that's And see, this is what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Every one of them are, are something so special to me. And when we have one that goes, it's, it's somebody, we lost one girl. That I, I, for weeks, it, I couldn't have felt worse if it had been in my family. I yeah. mean, uh, she was young, too, but she had cancer, and she had come to us for, I mean, five, maybe five years. And it was very sudden, and she kept it quiet. She didn't tell us anything about it, and the first thing you know, she wasn't coming, and the next thing you know, she was gone. But um, the whole thing is, is so, that's, that's why I tell everybody, I, it has nothing to do with me. It's, it's just what we have. I mean, yeah. It, 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 it's just entirely different. Uh huh. That's wonderful. Really? No, they, they, uh, yeah, at Bertha, uh, at, I'm using this word again, you'll find her a little crusty and a little abrupt and maybe a little sarcastic. She is the dearest friend. She suffers with me through everything. I mean, and, and if you mention me, she, there's never, she's never come to a meeting that she didn't tell me how much she loved me. And she's a very, very hard person to deal with. Uh -huh. But it's, it's always been the same way ever since she's been coming. Uh -huh. I, it, it, it just thrills me. I mean, I, even just thinking about it, I, I always, I, I don't know. I just hope that if anything happens to me, it can go on and that they can have, not that I'm that important, but I want them to keep it going with the same kind of a thing that they have now. I mean, uh, everybody helps everybody else. Uh -huh. it, it's just... I bet so that your per I mean, it's true that they will. I bet your personality has a lot to do with the mix, what it's like. And, 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 well, to a degree, this reason, because I'm not structured. Is, I uh -huh. mean, Everything with me is fine. I mean, yeah. what they do is fine, and I have a marvelous time. And I'd hate to see it go back to uh, be one of these things where somebody... I mean, yeah. nobody... When I went, honey, when I first went in that group of old ladies, I'll tell you, nobody laughed. And, and, and I, <laughs> I... I laugh now when I say old ladies because I'm one of them, but I don't think I'll... I don't believe, unless I lose my... up here, I'll ever be like them because uh -huh. everything was so... Uh, they paid dues, you know, and this, this little group here didn't belong up here, so they couldn't vote when there was any voting to be done. <laughs> and, and I used to think, oh my. And I, I don't think I could have quite coped with it if it hadn't been for my husband. Oh. They were nice people individually. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I was very fond of the lady who was the president. And I loved the lady who was a treasurer, but when they all got together, it was strictly business. I mean, uh, we're here to worship the Lord, and yeah. and it's a little hard for me because I started out as a strict Catholic, uh -huh. and then when my mother died, my father was a strict Methodist, and I was a strict Methodist, and, uh -huh. and when I was a Methodist, I went with a girlfriend to the Salvation Army, and I loved the way they sang, so I went to the Salvation Army 
uh, 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 church Tuesday. Oh, you see? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, uh, three times a day, I saw the uh, Sunday school, not the church. Uh, I went three times a day because I went in the morning at night in Methodist in the afternoon to the summer. I came up here and I joined the Baptists and I, they took me out in the stream and baptized me, you know, and I, I felt then I had an end, you know. <laughs> and, and lo and behold, when I came up here, my husband is a, he shot a deacon or something down here in, the, in this church, and he said to me, well, dear, I'll go with you to your church, but I hate to give up my church. And I said, heck, I've given up so many churches, I'll just go to this one. So now I'm <laughs> <laughs> true, every word of it. Every word of it. My minister gets it. I said we were having lunch one time. This the minister before this was there, and he, they got talking about religion, about how narrow-minded some people are. And I said, well, it would be very difficult for me to be narrow-minded. <laughs> and so I told him the whole story, uh -huh. and he burst out laughing. And I said, now look, Reverend Carter, when I get up there, what are they going to do with me? I said, I'm going to knock on this door, and they're going to say. Mm -mm, you're not a Baptist. Mm -mm, before. And he said, Kathleen, I don't have a worry in the world about you. He says, they're going to let you in someplace. So I feel better about it now. <laughs> well, the funny, if I was just, if I wasn't such a, I go to church every Sunday. If I was such a devoted church person, it wouldn't look so funny, you know, if you just weren't run from one church to the other. But when I go, I do my best. I mean, <laughs> no, no. I mean, I'm. I've covered all the bases, uh -huh. and I think probably I'm, I'm, they've got it arranged now someplace for me. I don't know where. <laughs> no. I'm Irish. Yeah. Does that tell you anything? Yeah. Oh, you kissed the blarney stuff. I sure did. <laughs> uh, what was your maiden name? Uh, Ham uh, well, of course, I was right first. My father was right. Uh, yeah, my mother was the Irish. She came over on the boat. Oh, really? Wow. Oh, yes. And my father was uh, a lot of his ancestry was Irish. Uh -huh. I mean, he had English too, but he was Irish mainly. And uh, so then, of course, uh, I I'm really Irish to the backbone, I guess. Yeah. And of course, then I married Hamilton, and then I I had a love name too, married Hamilton, and, and now we're all so uh -huh. German. Uh huh. Yeah. German and Irish. I, I, look, I just look at that combination. I think you know dar uh, Germans are very dour. Yeah. Uh, probably, yeah. And he is oh, he's a typical German. Yeah. So there are a lot of Irish people where you grew up. No. 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 We don't have too many Irish up here. Yeah. Few. Uh -huh. But uh, in the city, of course, where where my uh, aunts and cousins were. They lived in a real, there was nothing but Irish in that community. Yeah. Because my mother had uh, four sisters and two brothers, and then I had a lot of cousins down there. They're all gone. They're all died. They have all died. They, uh -huh. Most of them died young. And I don't know how I got to be 73, yeah. 74. I never could keep track. And, uh, but uh, then, it, of course, it was all Irish. I mean, there was nothing else in there. I guess they wouldn't even let an Irishman in for all I know. I, I don't really. But uh, now, when we move to the country, the country is more a conglomeration. They're never yeah. uh, settled in. Although out in Iowa, where my husband comes from, they have a lot of German communities where yeah. it's all German. Right. But I don't I, in, New, in the east here. I don't see that that much. I mean, it's usually it doesn't seem to be around here. No. But in the city, definitely. Oh yes, in the city. Yeah. Oh yes, they always the Italian and everything has yeah. their own little group. But uh, here, I mean. Uh, whenever I ask people, they uh, see I, I say, "Well, I'm Irish." You ask somebody, and they all seem to be a mixture. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I mean, it, it's uh, it, it's really funny because uh, when you when we would be talking about people getting married, uh, I'd say, "Well, for heaven's sakes, I guess they all just married each other because it was a lo long ways over the hill there. You didn't go looking for a bride anyplace else. I, right. It was always a big." It's true. You ever, it, I go all around the Catskills talking to people, and everybody is yes. related somehow to mm -hmm. somebody. I mean, there are these big families that have been there forever. And you find that these, you know, two big families will have married each other. Mm -hmm. It goes on forever. That used to really fun. so long since they came from wherever they, were, they originally came from, and it's not important to them. That's right. To be ethnic, really. That's right. Well, that always puzzled me, uh, because... Uh, you see, when I married, and my, my, my mother was from New York in the Irish community. She came up here as a waitress. She wanted a summer vacation. She came up here as a waitress and married my father. Wow. That's, and 
and uh, he was he was the handyman at the hotel where she worked. He did uh, a big hotel and everything, and that's how they came to get married. And of course, she wanted to go back to the city because she hated the country. Uh huh. And uh, he, when he went uh, down there, he hated it too. And so finally, she agreed to come up here. Well, uh, of course. Uh, I wasn't related to anybody much up here because my father's family was one of the families that didn't marry into other families much. Right. I mean, they were just family. But when I married my first husband, I didn't dare open my mouth if I met anybody new because I knew that some way or other, <laughs> you didn't criticize anybody. You just loved everybody. I'll tell you, you just didn't say a word. <laughs> and I, 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 when I'd come home and I'd say to him, so-and-so, I met so-and-so. And, yeah, well, they're related to you, she told me, yeah. Well, I said, how'd that come? Oh, I don't know. They they really never know too much about their ancestry or who yeah. married who, but uh -huh. they all know they're related. And I used to say to him, my God, I've never seen so many relatives in my whole life. I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's I, really strange. I went to see Emma Kelly yesterday, who's a Hall of Famer, and I, I was on this long road on top of a mountain where there were probably 15 or 20 different Kellys, Kelly houses on the way to her house. And I said, oh my goodness, there are a lot of Kellys on this road. And, and she and her husband said, yes, yes. And I said, oh, are you related? All of you related? And I don't know. No, they don't know. <laughs> they don't know here. I mean, they, yeah. they, they really don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, well, I guess so, maybe. Well, you know, so-and-so said so one time. You know, that's, <laughs> that's all you hear. Uh -huh. I mean, it's just one of those things. You just don't seem to put any importance on it. Yeah. And of course, we're such a small family, really. Uh, in my own family, there's right. just my sister and her two boys, mm -hmm. and me and my two children. That's about all there is left. I mean, my mother's family is all gone, mm -hmm. and uh, of course, my father's family is pretty much gone. We have a few cousins up the line that I don't see very often, but I mean, we don't have family. But it always yeah. seems so strange to me. Mm -hmm. when, when that little dietitian came out of college and came down to work to Grainsville. She hadn't been there any time at all when she made some kind of a critical remark about somebody, and, and uh, the girl that was the dish was the washer said, well, that's a cousin of mine, and I found this poor little soul crying in the corner, and she said, well, I shouldn't have said anything in front of her like that, because she said something about this woman having so many husbands she'd heard. And I said, look, Rosemary, I said, you just remember, don't criticize anybody, don't say anything about it, because every damn person in this part of the country is related to each other. <laughs> and that used to be her joke, you know, afterwards, after she got down there for a while, and you have to be, you can't, you can't, you just can't, because you find out that there's one way or another. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Connected. And it all comes back, it, it does. It does, sure. <laughs> I know, I have to learn that too. Yeah, it's very hard, but she just, uh, you know, because she, she was devastated, she, she didn't say it to be mean, because somebody told her about this. Uh, a woman, I've forgotten even who it was, but mm -hmm. I know they had a lot of mates, and she was so shocked that she said something bad, and of course, this, the dishwasher spoke up, she just didn't like it either, but anyway, you know, this is this is what you have to, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've learned everybody's related to me, anyway, yeah. except me. Um, okay. um, in order for me to use the, to use this to write about you, you have to sign a release. Oh, mm -hmm. let me show it to you. Also, could you, I came here without my directions. Could you tell me how to get to Martha and Bertha? Hmm. That's yeah. a little difficult. Yeah. You want me to go with you? If you'd like to, that'd be fine, yeah. No, I'm not shoving myself in. I mean, I just feel sorry for you trying to find them, that's all. If you, I would love to have you along if you want to come. Sure. Really? Yeah, I would love to. Yeah, it would be great. Okay, we'll have... I'm going to ask the same questions all over again. Well, I'll even stay out of the way. I, won't, I don't want to inhibit them. <laughs>